Welcome to Living Your Life Well Planned, the 80-20-365 success system from Adam Vincent Gilmer. Welcome to this episode, number 35. My name's Gene Belitis, and I'm your host today. Um, make sure you have your daily planner open. If you don't have one yet, go to the website. Maybe you're at the website right now, binge watching and listening, 80-20-365.com. The daily planner is something you'll start with in the morning, you'll carry it around with you all day long, and you'll score your day uh, right before you go to bed. It's it's essential to have one, and once you get into it, it's uh, you'll get addicted. Adam is, I am. People uh, downloading this course all around the world are getting their planners, and uh, Adam and I are very happy to uh, to be changing lives all around the world. Um, if you were with us in episode uh, 34, you know that uh, we ended it by saying that uh, this may be the quickest uh, episodes of our podcast. And here's the subject matter. Pity parties, blaming others, and making up excuses are not the trait of a leader. Now, Adam, we've all had successes in our life. We've all had failures in our life. If you don't have one, you can't contrast one without the other. If you haven't had a failure, you really don't understand successes as well as you should because you might be taking it for granted. But things do go wrong. In the COVID area, businesses have fallen apart. People have had to come up with new ways to earn an income. You know, but some people saw this COVID thing and you know what? They got into the fetal position and it was one big pity party. Meanwhile, yeah. people like you and I were building other businesses. Yeah. Let's talk about pity parties because they do happen. Let's talk about not taking responsibility, mm -hmm. which is called blaming others and making excuses. I mean, they, you know what? None are the trait of a leader. That is absolutely true. So I'm going to start off being controversial <clears throat> on this episode. Um, I'm currently in California. We're going to be traveling to our Tahoe uh, Incline Village home. And <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff, uh, you know, going around right now where there are restaurants don't open, businesses are closed, people can't make money, this and the other. And there's a ton of blame being put on our, in, in, I'm in California right now, uh, putting it on our governor, uh, uh, Gavin Newsom. Okay. Now, I mean, I, I do think he, you know, he's probably trying to do the best that he can do. But here's the thing. There's a ton of people um, taking shots at the guy. Okay. And I understand why. Like, you know, if you have a business, <laughs> you have a restaurant, you can't open up. There's this, that, and the other. <clears throat> Two doors down, there's a, uh, a place shooting a movie and <clears throat> they're open. Uh, they have an outside tent for eating. You, you've all seen this probably on the news or what have you, right? Yeah. And 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 the stuff I'm looking at is like, you know, people saying, oh, well, you know, stay at home and, you know, we're, we're on a complete lockdown. This and that. Now, <clears throat> we could take that and say, you know, well, Gavin doesn't know what he's doing and this, that, and the other, and what have you. Now, from his probably standpoint, he's looking at saying, I want people to be safe, this, that, and the other, you know, blah, blah, what have you. But But if you're in business and you keep blaming him, Okay, and you keep doing the same thing. Let me just tell you where the blame starts to fall in the same shoes that you're wearing. <clears throat> because <clears throat> Gavin's not going to pick up the phone and say, Hey, Gene, <laughs> listen, uh, I don't want to tell you about that business. So, this is what we have to do to keep people safe. What have you? And if we continuously blame the guy, not that I agree with his policies, I'm just saying, you as the entrepreneur, you as the person, have to do something different because this is the situation that we're in. Okay. And I'm not saying that uh, it's right to lay off the 10, 15 people or, and, and that's a terrible situation to be in, but this is, this, these are the, this is the hand we're dealt with. So what we could do, we could blame the government. We could blame Trump. We could blame uh, Biden and Camilla, you know, name it. Okay. We could blame all of our governmental leaders for, everything else going on. Let me ask you all of you a serious question. When last did the government pick up the phone and call you personally and say, hey, listen, you know, we, we, we're here to help you out. It's not gonna happen, okay? You have to pick yourself up because I've had massive failures. I've lost millions and millions of dollars, okay? Um, I've, I've, been in, I've been in business where it did not work. Can you imagine if I stayed in that pity party for one second and go, oh, you know, and listen, it sucks. <laughs> okay. The pain of going through something that you put energy and time into and it didn't work. It freaking sucks when it's failing. But, but there's a, there's a beautiful silver lining in failure. 
And there's a beautiful silver lining if you're going to continuously blame the government and who's the next president and, and, and govern. What, you can't do that because you get caught up in, in that um, <clears throat> raggedy ass masses mentality, the Rams mentality. Okay. And what the problem is, is that they always finding fault with everything else except yourself. And if you are putting yourself into that uh, mindset, because the only thing you're in control of in this life, okay, is your mindset. And if you're allowing the rams to move you in a direction, oh, you know, jump on the bandwagon, let me go pick it. I mean, seriously, like picketing is going to pay your bills, okay? Like, you know, get serious. And I listen, I understand you need to protest, what have you blowing up buildings, starting fires, pulling down statues. Really, that's a great way for us to make this country fantastic. Fan I mean, come on, let's get serious. Start with yourself, get yourself a serious plan. Start working with people. Hey, so you've got to make a change. So you've got to close a business and you have to move forward. Look, maybe food is the only business you've been in your entire life, whatever. You are not a tree. Trees can't, you know, move. <laughs> But you can. So long story short, I know you said we want to make this episode uh, super, super long. But look, what do leaders do? Really, what do leaders do? Leaders find a solution for a problem. They go in and they say, let's tackle it. Let's get some smart minds. Let's get, you know, Gene, myself, or maybe another consultant. Let's get some, uh, a fresh perspective. And that's the beautiful thing about when you start, you know, getting outside of uh, what everybody else is doing, you start looking for new directions. That is the practice of leadership. And leaders will take the time to say, okay, <clears throat> this isn't working for me anymore. What else do I need to do? And <clears throat> just by asking that question, and your brain's an amazing thing, you know, uh, the second pillar for us is brain, being brain. The moment you ask your brain a question, here comes an answer. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't know. Well, there goes the pity party again. Your brain, listen, you're not stupid, okay? Come on, wake up. When you ask yourself a question, what can I do different? Maybe you don't want to do it, okay? Maybe you don't want to do something different, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna pay your bills staying stuck in that one place. It's time to make a change. And you know, here's the other thing. <clears throat> Maybe God's closed that chapter for you on that business, okay? And in a nice way, it's a protection, <laughs> okay? It's not so nice going through the failure, but in a nice way, it's a protection. And the other side of it is, is now let's open up and say, what else can I do? And, you know, um, I've had to have, you know, hard conversations with, you know, my wife or other people that I love and care about brothers, um, mother, father, friends, colleagues, and go, you know, it's time for you to, you know, ha have a loud thunderous pop happen. And that loud thunderous pop that I want you to get up is like, you know, it's, it's, it's pulling your head out and pop. let's get some new fresh ideas into making something happen and stop putting the blame on somebody else. If things aren't working out uh, because somebody else is, they shut down this or the other, it's time for you. That's the invitation. It's time for you to pick up something new and say, let's go, let's go look at something different. Well, you know, um, I think that happens to people within sales organizations as well. Um, we may attract a lot of people into our business, but sometimes the people in our business don't have the same work ethics as we do. Yeah. And then and instead of pursuing their goals, they put their hands up and they say, oh, this isn't working. I knew this wasn't going to work. Now, I, I know people have had sales organizations where hundreds of people have put their hands up in the same month and, and they've just left. And, you know, when you're in charge of that sales organization, you know, that might be the reason you're going to have a little mini pity party. But I know that looking, you know, you always say to look at the people you hang around with. I've always looked at people who have given up and left organizations and the real leaders say, you know what, if, if, I, dra if I dragged somebody into my business, I don't want to be dragging them around. And sometimes when people in your sales organizations quit, it's kind of like cleaning out your closet and the universe uh, uh, pours a, a vacuum and 
it, it allows the, the good to start coming in. So sometimes when people quit, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It could be, in fact, a really good thing. You know, Gene, I'm laughing, not, not, uh, uh, not that I found what you're saying funny. I was laughing because of the thought I was having while you were um, talking there. And um, you and I have a dear friend and, uh, you know, his personal relationships are hard. Okay. And um, we're sitting down talking and uh, piggybacking on your, on your last thought. And, you know, he goes, how, he asked me how I made my, personal relationship work. And I said, well, you know what? I said, when I go out and I enjoy a great meal, okay? Um, let's just say you go out to your favorite steakhouse and it's open, okay? <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> when it's open. When it's open. <clears throat> and you sit down and you enjoy the meal and you, you, you have the salad and you order your steak and you get your dessert and you get your coffee or whatever it is for, you know, whatever your favorite stuff is, okay? <clears throat> and you enjoy it and you, and you digest it. And then 24, 48 hours later, you have to go have a movement, okay? Uh, and that movement is you go visit the, the, the porcelain throne, right? Um, and you get rid of that meal. Why would you want to take that same meal and put it back in you, <laughs> okay? And here's my point to everybody, okay? Look, <clears throat> man, crap is gonna happen <laughs> okay and you can you can choose to hang around the smell and the this that and the other and get yourself into that mess or you can choose to wash up afterwards hit the flush button whoosh, and start over and go have another meal and 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 the joy that you're going to have is <clears throat> hey how do we make that next meal happen what's what's that plan look like because guess what crying over the spilt milk, water under the bridge, hitting the flush button. You know, uh, the lobsters have to eat, Gene. Okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. So you, you, you get it, right? So look, there's, there's, you've got to put yourself in a situation where, you know, failure is just part of the success cycle. It's part of the deal. You, I don't know anybody, you know, I watched Elon Musk, you know, he just, he's moving from, from California to Texas, taxes. And, right. on yeah. the <clears throat> and I don't think people know, do you know how many failures this guy's had? <laughs> okay. oh, Listen. A lot. <laughs> Listen, he, he spent tens of millions having a, a rocket take off and then come back down and crash. <laughs> okay. And he talked about uh, one of his interviews. He says, one of the things people suffer, he suffers from, we suffer from, is something called wishful thinking. Wishful thinking is based on, <clears throat> you want something to be real. You want something to work. And you're putting all your energies and efforts and time into making it work. And guess what? It's not working, but you keep wishing that it would work. And he says, it's, it's wanting something to be true when it's not true, okay? And, and I know in rounding out our episode here, look, <clears throat> I cannot, Gene cannot, the system, the system, okay? Um, using it for one day, actually just even using it for a few days, okay? Will not make you massively successful. But you know, behind me, I don't know if you guys can see, but behind me over here, I go, let me see, one, two, three, four, five. That's seven years of my life. And that's why I have them up here. So, you know, it's, it's part of the marketing. I can go back and say, what was I doing? December, what have you, this year? And go, hey, let me go through my plan. I'm like, hey, you know what? You know what? Let me say what I was doing that day. Ready to watch this? I was on a podcast. I was with Gene. Now we were shooting, you know, these episodes. Okay. I can go back and do all that, but you know what? <clears throat> if I didn't have those blueprints, I wouldn't have had the successes that I'm having today. And by the way, just because I got seven years of four, uh, uh, you know, four or three month planning systems, it's filled with failure too. There's people that told me, no, no, no. I, I've received more no's in my life. No, I'm not interested. This other than I've received yeses. So my successes have been built on a whole bunch of failures. And, and, and so has Elon Musk. And so has Jeff Brizos. And so has yours, Gene. And anybody else 
<clears throat> but you but you can't get stuck in, in, in and stay there. You know, a few weeks ago, uh, Gene, you bounced from one coast to the other coast. Okay. Correct. Change happens, man. Yep. Great. Let's move forward. Like, what are we? What else are we going to do? We can't stay and go. Oh, you know, gee whiz, you know, let me go and have a few drinks and gee, we must, and keep doing that every day. That's not good for the body. Okay. You you got to put yourself in a mode which is you're going to grow. And to and by the way, the whole point of growing is it's painful. Okay. It's not easy to grow, but you're going to grow anyway. You're either going to grow in a negative direction and it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, or you can choose to move yourself, which is the, which is the choices you're making, make a smarter choice and move yourself in a direction that, that's, that brings you closer to your goals and dreams than what's been happening. And if you, if, which path would you rather be on? See, cause the, the movie, the matrix, I loved it. Uh, I got to watch it the other day with Jessica <clears throat> again. Um, and Neo, he's sitting in this Lincoln, okay, uh, suicide doors and what have you, I love it. And he's given um, Trinity, um, the lady who plays Trinity uh, in the movie, uh, he's about to get out of the car, okay? And Trinity says, Neo, you know where that road leads because he's getting out into the rain and he's, he's, he's about to leave the opportunity, okay, of let me get out of the situation. Pity party, oh, wake up in the morning, everything's good, same bed, same pillow, blah, blah, blah. But he chose to follow the white rabbit and it leads him down the rabbit hole, which is, you know, I love this why I love the movie. It's, it's a serendipitous thing. <clears throat> and he's getting out of the car, she says these words and he stops. And the movie director captures this moment of choice, okay? And he's like, oh yeah, I do know where this road leads. And you know what he chooses to do? He says, <clears throat> he chooses to get back in the car and go and have a meeting with Morpheus, okay? And that's the, I'm getting goosebumps, so that's the, that's the deciding moment. And when we're all faced with all these things <clears throat> of you know, terrible coronavirus, and I, 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 for crying out loud, like, 2019, I did, I did more than 400,000 miles. Uh, 2020, I did what? 3,000 miles by plane? <laughs> I mean, the huge difference. Now, it, it, so what did we do? We got, we just rearranged. We said, rather than go and do workshops and fill up seminar rooms, we started doing these uh, online events. We started doing a ton of Zoom calls and, and coaching and teaching and sending books out all over the place and what have you. You know why? <clears throat> we want to help. We want to create value, but we don't want people to stay stuck. We want you to yeah. move in a positive direction. Yeah. And, and you know, um, just getting back to your Elon Musk uh, story there, mm -hmm. you know, after that rocket blew up, um, a reporter, you know, asked him about the event, spending, you know, millions and millions of dollars. The rocket blew up. He <laughs> said, you must be disappointed. He said, I'm not disappointed at all. It was a complete success. And the, the reporter was like, he goes, what do you mean it was a success? He right. said, do you have any idea how much we learned from that thing blowing up so it won't happen again? You know, that's mindset. Well, listen, I said this was going to be a, one of our shorter episodes because we were dealing with a little bit of negativity. But I think you hit the, the nail on the head there, Adam. You just got to flush it down the toilet. Flush it away. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> and I just love that. Get your daily planner here at 8020365.com, a buck a day, and you'll have a GPS for the rest of your life. Thanks, Adam. Coming up on our next episode, episode 36, um, we've alluded to this in the past. We're going to wrap it all up uh, from a couple of episodes ago. What are networking and specifically, a very important one, what are mastermind groups? You may have heard of that in the past. Maybe not, but we're going to uh, drill down into what a mastermind group is and why you should be a part of one. For Adam Vincent Gilmer, I'm your host, Gene Valaitis, living your life well planned.